exercise 2c fourth problem the compound interest calculated yearly on a certain sum of money we don't know what is that sum for the second year is rupees 1089 for the second year is equal to rupees 1089 and for the third year it is for the third year it is rupees 1 1197.90 calculate the rate of interest r is equal to what and the sum of money what is p as you know the difference between the interest of the second year and the interest of the third year is the interest on the second year compound interest so this difference is the interest on this 1197.90 1089 8 108.90 rupees 108.90 is the difference between between the compound interest of the third year and compound interest of the second year for 1089 the interest is equal to 108.9 for 100 what is the interest 100 into 108.9 upon 1089 when this is multiplied by 100 we get 10890 upon 1089 this is equal to 10 so rate is equal to 10% rate is equal to 10% next we have to find the sum this is the compound interest of the second year let the sum be rupees 100 rate is equal to 10% in the first year the principal is 100 interest is equal to 10 so amount becomes rupees 110 this becomes the principal for the second year rupees 110 So interest is equal to ten percent of hundred and ten. That is rupees eleven. Now the compound interest for the second year is rupees eleven when the principal is equal to hundred. When the principal is equal to hundred, the compound interest for the second year is equal to rupees eleven. Therefore, if the compound interest is rupees one zero eight nine, what is the principal? Hundred into one zero eight nine divided by eleven. Eleven nines are ninety nine. Nine remains. Eleven nines are ninety nine. Ninety nine into hundred is equal to rupees nine nine zero zero. This is the sum. Fifth problem. Mohit invests rupees eight thousand. Principal is equal to rupees eight thousand for three years. For three years, at a certain rate of interest, compounded annually. At the end of one year, at the end of one year is this. It amounts to rupees nine thousand four hundred forty. Rupees nine thousand four hundred forty is the amount at the end of the first year. Calculate the rate of interest per annum. Rate is equal to what? And the amount at the end of the second year. This amount we have to find. And the interest accrued in the third year. This interest we have to find. Now this interest is equal to amount minus principal. Nine four four zero minus eight thousand is equal to one thousand four hundred forty rupees. That is the interest on rupees eight thousand. For eight thousand, the interest is equal to one four four zero for hundred. How much? Hundred into one four four zero divided by eight thousand. One four four divided by eight is equal to eighteen. Eighteen percent rate is eighteen percent. Next, we have to find the amount at the end of the second year. Rupees nine thousand four hundred forty becomes the principal for the second year. So the interest is equal to eighteen percent of nine thousand four hundred forty. P T 
वन इयर आर इज इक्वल टू एटीन अपॉन हंड्रेड नाइन फोर फोर इंटू एटीन इज इक्वल टू सिक्सटीन डिवाइडेड बाई टेन वन थाउजेंड सिक्स हंड्रेड नाइन्टी नाइन पॉइंट टू रुपीज वन थाउजेंड सिक्स हंड्रेड नाइन्टी नाइन पॉइंट टू This is the interest of the second year. Compound interest of the second year. Amount is equal to principal plus interest. Nine four four zero plus one six nine nine point two. This is equal to rupees eleven thousand one hundred thirty nine point two. The amount at the end of second year is equal to rupees eleven thousand one hundred thirty nine point two zero. Next, we have to find the interest accrued in the third year. This interest. So this becomes eleven thousand one hundred thirty-nine point two zero. This is the principal of the third year. P T R upon hundred. So when we multiply. One 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 three nine two zero by eighteen. We get divided by ten thousand. So one two three four. One two three four. This is equal to rupees two thousand five point. We can increase one here because it's more than five point zero six. This is the interest accrued in the third year. Sixth problem: Geeta borrowed rupees fifteen thousand for eighteen months at a certain rate of interest, compound rate semi-annually. Semi-annually, if at the end of six months it amounted to rupees fifteen thousand six hundred, principal is equal to rupees fifteen thousand. It amounts to rupees fifteen thousand six hundred at the end of six months. This is interest. We have to find the rate of interest per annum and the total amount of money that Geeta must pay at the end of eighteen months in order to clear the account. This amount we have to find. Amount minus principal is equal to interest. That is rupees six hundred for rupees fifteen thousand. The interest is equal to rupees six hundred. For hundred, what is the interest? Hundred into six hundred divided by fifteen thousand. Three zeros cut. Fifteen into four is equal to sixty. Rate is equal to four percent for six months. Therefore, rate is equal to eight percent per annum. Now we have to find the amount at the end of eighteen months. So we have found that rate is equal to eight percent. So this becomes fifteen thousand six hundred becomes the principal for the second year. Therefore, P T time is half year rate upon hundred. Rupee six twenty four. Rupee six twenty four is the interest for the second half. So the amount becomes fifteen thousand six hundred plus six twenty four is equal to rupees sixteen thousand two hundred twenty four. This becomes the principal for the next half year. P T R upon hundred. Six four eight. Nine six divided by hundred is equal to six forty eight point nine six. This is the interest for the third half. Rupees six forty eight point nine six. Now the amount is equal to plus six forty eight point nine six. Rupees sixteen thousand eight hundred seventy two point nine six. That's the total amount of money that Gita must pay at the end of eighteen months in order to clear the account.